Another thing I do want to point out about Dejan Edwards and Kendall Milton about practice today. Kendall Milton was flying as he was running those sprints with everybody else. He was outpacing everybody else by 30 yards. I mean, just blowing them away. Um, so you could tell he's kind of chomping at the bit to get back. And guys, listen, I know Kendall has been hurt. Okay. Like I know, I know that, that like it's been kind of one soft tissue injury after another. It's been a couple knee injuries and, there's this tendency to say he's soft. Y'all, Kendall Milton is not soft, okay? Like, he's got some bad luck. Maybe he's got some connective tissue th stuff going on. I don't know. But Kendall Milton is a very tough, very dedicated, very hardworking individual. Um, and, and he's a guy that's tried to take a lot of precautions to keep these things from happening. They keep happening to him, and it sucks. Um, but one thing, another thing I want to point out, too, um, Kendall played in 13 of 15 games last year. And if Georgia can get 13 to 15 out of them this year, I think Georgia's going to feel real good about that. I'm excited to see him, man. I, I mean, the narrative around him, I understand it, but it's also just not true that he's not ready to go, that he, that he can't stay on the field, you know, like it's some indictment of him. You know, to hear that he's non-contact right now, uh, that's a good thing in a weird way that he's actually out there and not on the sideline. I want to say this to fans too. Also, anytime those guys are out there running, it's a good sign. If they're not sh if they're not shutting them down, they're not in there getting treatment, um, that's a good sign. Like Jackson Morning. Meeks, right? I saw Jackson Meeks while I was up in the baseball press box today walk across the parking lot in a walking boot, okay? So Jackson Meeks is out for a little while, um, you know, and he wasn't out there running while we were out there. Not a great sign. But, you know, if these dudes are out there running, they're conditioning – they're out there on their, their injuries. Um, that's a good sign. And, and, and you know, Georgia's got several guys doing that. They're kind of beat up by injuries right now, but they've got time to get them back. Yeah. Well, and, and you mentioned it, that those guys were running. Um, I may have missed you saying it, but Dejan was out there. He was running. It, he was. Was, it, it wasn't like he was completely sidelined. And he wasn't even a non-contact jersey. Um, you yeah. know, he was just, you know, running, had a brace on that right knee and, as somebody pointed out on our board, um, you know, being being pro football doctor over here, um, you know, he, that's an injury that probably has more to do with the lateral movement than it does, you know, getting up and down the field north and MCO. south. And, and he's a he's a north and south runner. I mean, that's something that obviously you're going to want to see him be able to move, you know, laterally, but. He's he's a downhill guy, and and so you know I think he'll be able to bounce back from that. Um, Georgia certainly needs him. They need Kendall Milton. They need those guys to stay healthy, uh, but first they need them to get healthy. All right. So obviously Georgia is going to miss Branson Robinson's unique ability to just pummel people and punish them because he is a human hammer. But let's look at what Georgia does have at running back specifically because that is such an area of concern. And I want to try to calm y'all down a little bit tonight. So let's look at what the dogs have. If a game were to start this week, who would start for the dogs? And what would the rest of that depth chart look like behind, presumably, Kendall Milton? I mean, I don't know that Kendall Milton would start this week. Who? It, but here's a question: Who are they playing in this game? Because if they're playing UT Martin, I don't know that Kendall Milton's playing. I mean, if, if, you, if you're playing, taking if you're taking the guys who are just fully healthy right now and taking Kendall Milton out of the mix, I think um, I think Andrew Paul would probably get the start, and I think for now, Cash Jones would probably be the next man in the game, um, just based on how the reps were split during the scrimmage, because Cash Jones got run with the ones. Um, that Roderick Robinson did not, and then Roderick Robinson would be the number, th you know, number three guy there. Um, I'd, I'd probably switch Cash and Andrew there, just because they know a little bit. They've seen Cash in a in a game before. Um, but I mean, the, look, it, it, it's not you know you're not running one running back the entire game, so both of them would be getting first team right significant number of carries. The starting I, running back. I, at Georgia, I lean Cash Jones. Yeah, the starting running back at Georgia is not always the most important 
indication of who the best is. It, it does depend on what they're going up against defensively. But I was curious about that because I wonder, too, about Cash Jones just being more experienced and having you know more game tape out there for people to – for Georgia's coaches to say, okay, we know this guy can actually deliver when we need him to. Uh, and granted, those are limited reps. But uh, just looking this week, it's kind of crazy to see what that depth chart would look like. And I'm not saying that's what it will look like against UT Martin. But uh, right now, it, it is kind of tenuous. Jake, yeah, do you for, think – I mean – For sure. Jake, and, and I will say this about Paul. Um, from what I understand from Saturday's scrimmage, it's when that first offense was on the field, Andrew Paul was with it. Um, but it's still, so, it's still so tough to tell. I mean, I do think Cash Jones would play as things are right now. I think probably Savon Clark would also get in the game. Um, you know, Laneith Whitehead is battling kind of the same thing that Roderick Robinson is, which is basically trying to figure out offense, you know, trying to figure out how to operate within an offense. But I think Rod Roderick Robinson would also be a part of it as well. Jake, <clears throat> do you think Kendall Milton plays in against UT Martin in 10 days? Maybe a little, you know, maybe to the point that, you know, they don't want to give him, you know, too many, too many miles. They don't want to pile his miles up there. Uh, and, and give him a chance to re-injure his hamstring, but at the same time, maybe try to get his feet wet, get him some reps. Um, I think there's a good chance. I mean, you, you look at kind of what Georgia has coming up. You know, they'll probably get after it <clears throat> reg regular practice tomorrow. Um, just from what I understand, Monday was very light. And then, you know, Tuesday they kind of, you know, I think they'll probably get after it three days this week. Probably have a light, lighter practice on Friday, and then it'll be kind of that dress rehearsal deal on Saturday. Players will be off on Sunday. Um, that's a that's a lot of time right there for Kendall's you know body to heal and for him to get the treatment he needs. So I think there's a good chance that he's uh, he's feeling pretty good on Monday, and you know they can give him some practice reps, work him back in, maybe get him a few carries in the first game. And um, you know these first two men, um, it's an opportunity for these guys to get healthy. I mean, I fully expect unless there's another setback, I fully expect Georgia to have four healthy scholarship running backs, fully healthy, 100% scholarship running backs by the time South Carolina rolls into town. Yeah, that was going to be my next question. I mean, that is the big game that you got to, you know, you think that you need to have as much depth back there as possible. SEC opener, you know, y'all breeze past the fighting Beamers on the schedule, but it's an SEC opponent and they've recruited some pretty good dudes in spots. So, you know, that durability is going to be critical. And if not against South Carolina, then certainly at Auburn in a, a couple weeks after that. So when you see Georgia's running back depth, you know, maybe against UT Martin and Ball State, maybe you look like a, a patchwork quilt of guys that you don't really know that well. I still expect Georgia to try to get Kendall Milton in as much as they can, try to get Andrew Paul in uh, and try to get him confident. Because that, like I said, coming off of that ACL injury, getting confident mentally is going to be big for him. And he can't just roll into South Carolina with these guys not having any reps, I would think, unless they are, you know, unless they do have setbacks. No doubt. And, and something that needs to be considered as well is if you're going to have a good, not just a run game, but if you're going to have a good play action game, if you're going to have a good RPO game, you've, these guys have to take reps and, and, you know, that doesn't mean they have to be 100% absolute live reps where they're getting tackled to the ground, but the, they've got to have reps. The pads have to get popping, um, and, and that's something that's got to happen for them.